UMHB going into Whitewater and coming out with a result that I think the entire nation, when it comes to D3 football, was incredibly shocked about, myself included, the Crusaders. They go in to number three in the country, 35-17, and pick up the win at Perkins Stadium, in part much due to plays like this, the pick six in the first half that got things going for the Crusaders in that opening score. Their defense was all over the place, back-to-back-to-back drives, I do believe, with takeaways through the air for the crew. Yeah, this is one of those games where I would have taken Whitewater with the points. We're looking at spread. And stuff because it was 18 points. The over under was 39, which was like yeah. a staggeringly low number. Um, but you know, you look at last year's schedule when Mary, when Mary Hunter and Baylor played River Falls, they played this YAC team and they get their the break speed off of them, right? Mm-hmm. And then now they go into Whitewater and generate five interceptions defensively as well. Dude, the that. first two five touchdowns, pick six, we just saw picks. the second of them. That is insane. Yeah, that's ridiculous. They Mary Hunter and Baylor ran the ball really well. Cameron Ferguson had 112 yep. rushing yards. One of them. I give him credit there and a touchdown too. He had himself a heck of a game. And uh, anytime you can go into Perkins Stadium and win by 18 points, they're up 35 10, by the way, at one point. Yes. 21 nothing in the first, and that's where you're like, I-, I was refreshing the scoring page because I thought there may be a mistake. Like, that's just something that you do not expect. But like you said, 35-10 late in the third quarter. This game was all but put away already. The fourth quarter, they finished the deal. Uh, Whitewater does manage to uh, score on a punt return uh, late in the fourth, uh, you know, kind of four minutes left in the fourth. But this one was just, it was pretty obvious what our kind of game of the week would be here. Yeah, and I know I, w- I was doing a little bit of research about, like, Whitewater, like, his- the history of Whitewater football. I was looking through, like, year by year by year their schedule. I couldn't find a time where they lost by 18 points in the regular season, that is. Yeah. I am curious when the last time they lost a the game by 18 points was. I really would like to know. Because I went through, and, like, on, like, the history, I could I just could not find one. But I know there's at some point they had to have, but I just – Yeah. Maybe I need to do some more extension- extensive research, but uh, – yeah, and yeah. Jason, uh, is it Saniti, the the typical starter for that Warhawk offense? He was one for five, eight yards, and three interceptions. Now, it had come out, I believe, from a different source that he was battling like an illness, and, and that was part of the reason why he came out of the game as well. Uh, the other part of the reason, I'm assuming, was the three balls that he threw to the defense. Uh, but Jackson yeah. Chris comes in and actually puts together a pretty respectable stat line, 20 for 33, 236, did have the two interceptions, two more takeaways. That might be a record in itself for this Crusader defense. Yeah, five five picks is incredible. That's you got to they got to be leading the nation in picks now. You know, that's a I would play. imagine. I yes. have to imagine what they have. They held Whitewater too. I think that's something that maybe got lost. Talk about how they ran the ball pretty well. They held Whitewater to eighty eight yards on the ground on thirty seven carries. That I feel like is a really good stat. Um, that might that's be even more. Maybe got overlooked because of the turnover yeah. margin. Yeah, that might even be just as impressive, if not more, because like Whitewater's obviously like their whole culture revolves around pounding the rock, right? Like that's yes. their identity. Bit physical, tough football. It also, though, when you go down early, it's a lot harder to run the football. And I think that kind of threw Whitewater off completely, just being down early. But, um, and also, it's like when you're down early, you're going to have to throw the ball a lot more, which means probably more interceptions, too. It's just with one comes two, comes three, comes four, comes five. It's just <laughs> yeah. the domino effect. Not good. But they'll, and really, they'll be fine. They'll clean it up. They, they're Whitewater. Like, yeah. When you look at this but, box score, too, and, and they kind of fight their way back into it. Whitewater scored on two punt return touchdowns. I mean, their offense was abysmal. They could not get anything going. And you look at the the two teams, two of 13 and three of 14 on third down. And Whitewater was one of five on fourth down. They actually were dominant in the time of possession, 35 minutes to 25. But that's because all the scores for the Crusaders came off those pick sixes. They didn't even have to possess the ball to actually score the football. Um, it, It just... Very, very tough showing for the squad all around. And, and now we're going to learn a lot about this Warhawk team in general moving forward because with a loss like this now, you're going to have to really come out and play some of your best ball with some really great WIAC teams on the horizon. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they finish out because obviously you know, the WIAC is just the most, the most competitive conference in Division Three. But Whitewater's always been in that one and two spot. But I don't know, maybe is this the year they, they're not in the top? Is this year they missed the playoffs? Like, no, we'll have to see. But obviously, like you said, Whitewater's a program. Just that Wyack is deep, man. It's really deep. 
That's the thing. It almost feels like this could be the window that a, uh, a lacrosse, obviously, who has been there, but maybe even like a River Falls, who we've seen has been playing football, especially offensively, at an outstanding clip. This could just be that window and the door starting to crack open, if you will, and and maybe a, a little bit of a preview of what's to come at the end of the WIAC here and, and, and seeing a different team on top. Yeah. But, always, always a chance for anyone to play. 100%. Yeah, but that was... Uh, you know, you look at the rankings, and UMHB certainly deserved their jump in the uh, the national poll.